Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about hypovolemic shock and its associated care plan. So in this lesson, we will briefly take a look at the pathophysiology and etiology of hypovolemic shock. We're also going to look at additional things like subjective and objective data that your patient may present with, as well as nursing interventions and rationales. So hypovolemic shock is the loss of blood volume, which leads to decreased oxygenation of vital organs. This loss of blood volume results in the body's compensatory mechanisms failing and organs therefore shutting down. Hypovolemic shock can be caused by any condition which causes a loss of circulating blood volume or plasma volume, which includes things like hemorrhage, traumatic injuries, burns, and even prolonged vomiting or diarrhea. So the desired outcome is to restore circulating blood volume, preserve hemodynamics, and prevent any damage to those vital organs. So let's take a look at some of the subjective and objective data that your patient with hypovolemic shock may present with. Now remember, subjective data, these are going to be the things that are based on your patient's opinions or feelings. So for hypovolemic shock, this could include weakness, anxiety or restlessness, report of vomiting, diarrhea, rectal or even vaginal bleeding. Objective data might include a measured fluid loss that's greater than 1,500 milliliters, hemorrhage or burn, increased heart rate, respiratory rate, systemic vascular resistance, and also decreased blood pressure, CVP, level of consciousness, urine output, and cool and clammy skin. Okay, let's start to take a look at some of the specific nursing interventions for hypovolemic shock. So it is definitely important to assess the risk of bleeding, burns, and GI and GU losses. Guys, this is because hypovolemic shock can be caused by blood loss from traumatic injuries, internal bleeding like a GI bleed or a surgical complication, and postpartum hemorrhage or fluid loss from burns, diarrhea, and vomiting. So it is important for the nurse to identify these risks so they can be caught early. That is super important. Assessing and monitoring vital signs as well as level of consciousness are critical because they can signify advancing shock. In the early stages of shock, the patient may be tachycardic or tachypnic, and then it advances to hypotension. So a decreased BP in the later stage. Monitoring vital signs could help to prevent hypovolemic shock if caught early, but also help to determine the patient's response to treatment. So level of consciousness should be assessed because it may decrease as the patient loses oxygenation to the brain. So decreasing LOC is a sign of advancing shock. So guys, notify the provider if low blood pressure is not responding to fluids or if the patient is becoming harder to arouse. Okay, so monitoring hemodynamics is important to identify the severity of the shock and how well the patient is responding to treatment. So measurements should include mean arterial pressure or MAP, which is the average pressure within the arteries, a MAP that is decreasing below 60 millimeters of mercury shows decompensating shock. Central venous pressure measures the preload, which will be less than four millimeters of mercury in a patient with hypovolemic shock. So the goal is to see this number as well as the cardiac output increase 
with treatment. So speaking of cardiac output, this value may be normal for a while until the body's compensatory mechanisms begin to fail. Cardiac output value is assessed with a flow track or a PA catheter. So guys, uh, systemic vascular resistance or SVR measures the afterload. We expect this to be high because of vasoconstriction, which is a compensatory mechanism. If fluid resuscitation is effective, we will see this value return to normal. With hypovolemic shock, we may need to prepare the patient for certain procedures like an arterial line, or central line placement for invasive hemodynamic monitoring, even for intubation, if there's a decrease in consciousness to protect the patient's airway, or a trip to the OR to repair internal bleeding. So for line placement and OR preparation, be sure you have consent. Be sure it is obtained by the provider. Explain the procedure to the patient and family and follow facility procedures. Also, be sure to gather any necessary supplies and prep lines and tubing if necessary and remove patient belongings like clothes and jewelry if they're going to the OR. All right. So with hypovolemic shock, replacing fluids is super critical. So how do we do this? Well, first we insert two large bore IVs. Here is a way to remember this. Short and thick does the trick. Short and thick catheters provide for faster fluid administration, which is done with a pressure bag and rapid infuser as Guys, an infusion pump is only capable of infusing one liter an hour. So fluid should be given as soon as possible and as fast as possible to restore circulating blood volume. Crystalloids like normal saline and lactated ringers are used to replace fluid loss from sources other than bleeding or hemorrhage. Colloids are used to replace lost volume from hemorrhage. With the administration of blood products like packed red blood cells and fresh frozen plasma for hemorrhage or trauma, there are definitely things that we as nurses must know. First of all, a consent must be obtained for blood administration with the patient understanding possible reactions. Send a type and cross match to determine the patient's blood type. Before administration, the blood must be checked with another RN. Monitor using your facility's protocol. Usually this would be every 15 minutes times two, every 30 minutes times one, and every hour after that. However, in hypovolemic shock, even blood products are given rapidly. Okay, guys, here is a look at the completed hypovolemic shock care plan. All right, let's do a quick review. Hypovolemic shock is the loss of blood volume leading to decreased oxygenation of organs. Causes include hemorrhage, traumatic injuries, burns, vomiting, and diarrhea. Subjective data includes weakness, anxiety, report of vomiting, diarrhea, vaginal rectal bleeding. Objective data includes fluid volume, loss of greater than 1,500 mLs, increased heart rate, respiratory rate, systemic vascular resistance, decreased BP, CVP, cardiac output, level of consciousness, urine output, and cool, pale, clammy skin. Assess and monitor vital signs, level of consciousness, mean arterial pressure, cardiac output, SVR, and CVP. To prevent worsening shock and to evaluate treatment of effectiveness. Guys, prepare the patient for arterial and central line placement, for intubation, for the OR, and administer crystalloids, colloids, blood products with a large bore IV. Remember, short and thick does the trick. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.